Good morning. You know, I think it's needless to ask which one is Arun, which one is Yishai. Uh, she kind of gave it up. <laughs> so my name is Arun, and that's my colleague Yishai. Um, we're very excited here to be at the J Day, uh, talking about building Java in the open. I'm a principal open source technologist. I work in the open source team at Amazon, and I'll be at the conference for the next couple of days. So if you have any questions around open source and Amazon, happy to tag me or you know talk to me anything about it. So. Let's talk about um, OpenJDK at Amazon, what sort of it looks like. Uh, Amazon is a big Java shop. You know, we have thousands of services using Java at a huge scale. Um, and these services are running in production. So if you touch an Amazon service, very likely it's running a Java backend. Now in 2016, we realized we cannot rely upon the binary distribution of JDK. And the prime reason for that being that you know, there would be um, subtle changes in update releases that would potentially cause widespread impact for us. And then at the same time, there is an urgency to put the security fixes into the release because we don't want you know, our security, our services to suffer because of lack of security fixes. So we said, okay, we need to kind of start building from the source so that you know, we have control over you know, how often and what fixes, et cetera, can be delivered. So, we built an internal downstream distribution of OpenJDK. We just checked out the source code, built it, and started giving that to our services. Now, the most important aspect of that was how we were able to deliver quarterly security releases to all of our service teams at the cadence that matters to them. Customers you know, is basically what drives us, essentially. So whether it's internal or external. Now, because we were building from the source, these service teams started coming to us. They're saying, you know what, here's a small bug fix. Here is a, you know, we will look at the heat map, for example, and realize, oh, this particular method is taking too long. And if you look at Amazon scale, and if you look at the fleet resources that are being utilized, even a very tiny minor improvement could do a huge saving for us. So we started doing simple bug fixes, you know, operational and performance improvements, very tiny ones, but you know, showing us significant benefits. And again, contributing them upstream. Now, the services within Amazon, they were heavily using Oracle JDK, so it was very important for us to kind of have a drop-in replacement. And drop-in replacement in the sense, you know, the, the, if you think about the overall architecture, this is a very microservices-based architecture. So we have internal development deployment pipelines. So essentially, the developer will go to sleep Monday night, Tuesday morning they get up, and it's just switched over. There is no change required, essentially. So across thousands of services, as we switched from this internal distribution, the process was very seamless, except one change where we had to tweak the class path. Uh, TCK certification was important you know, because we want to make sure that there is compatibility with OpenJDK and Java SE platform, and that's what basically enabled us for the um, drop-in replacement as well. Uh, Linux is heavily the platform that is used across Amazon services, but then there are other platforms like Windows, uh, development for uh, Mac OS or Docker images. So all of those platforms, and this is all I'm talking about internal customers so far, okay? And the customers, <clears throat> internal customers, they really wanted a long-term support. So for example, if you're using JDK 8, I want to have the ability to keep running it you know, for next several years, even if a new version comes along. Because the important part for them is the service should not go down if a bug fix comes along or a security patch comes along. They want that support on that. And this is all internal customers, so it works out very well. Now, Amazon has 14 leadership principles, of which customer obsession is the top one. Roughly 90 to 95% of our roadmap is driven by customers. So customers tell us what to do, and then we go ahead and do that. Now, we treat our internal customers and external customers roughly the same. Well, internal customers, we have a lot more visibility. External customers, sometimes you don't have that visibility. So as customers were telling us that, hey, you know what? Um, the needs that you have internally within your engineering teams. So what we were doing is we were basically eliminating undifferentiated heavy lifting for the teams so that they can continue focusing on their apps. Don't worry about the long-term support. Don't worry about the security patches. We will take care of all of that. We realized the external customer needs are quite similar to the internal customer needs. So it became quite apparent and quite clear to us that we need to externalize Coretto and give it to the world. And that's where we launched Amazon Coretto at DevOps. And we were very excited that me and Yishai were there at DevOps Belgium last year with James Gosling you know, announcing it. 
And the aspect that we need to add here was no cost long-term support. So there is no cost associated with you know, Amazon Coretto. It would run on a cloud of your choice. It would run on the desktop. It would run as a Docker image. It would run on your desktop, wherever you want to run it. You know, there is, and it's bug by bug compatible. That's one of the features that our customers are really liking it. One of the points I really want to stress upon is it is not a fork. It is a downstream distribution of OpenJDK. People often get confused. Oh, Amazon Coretto is a new name, so it is really a fork, or how are you doing it? That is not at all the case at all. As a matter of fact, we test very extensively for OpenJDK. You know, we make sure that we run all the JT Reg tests, we run all the TCK tests on each Coretto release that is made you know, to the world. So that's very constantly part of the process that we do. And then the most important part is merge everything upstream. Whether in the OpenJDK tip, whether you open a JBS or a Java bug tracker issue or attach a patch over there, everything is out available in the real world so that you, know, you can reproduce it yourself and there is nothing you know, hidden into our firewalls. A lot of things that we do at Amazon, you know, at open source that we do, bubble up from the fact that we don't want to maintain the technical debt. Because if you fork, essentially, it causes a technical debt over a long, long period of time. And it also causes compatibility changes. And those compatibility changes removes the agility from your development, deployment, and those production environments. So we want to make sure that neither we have to build a technical debt, nor there are compatibility changes for you over the long period of time. And that's the reason we want to make sure that Coretto stays you know, Java SE compliant and you know, it's a drop-in replacement for OpenJDK. So let's see how we actually do this. So um, like, like uh, Arun mentioned, one of the most important thing is for patches to go upstream. So um, a few uh, months ago, Red Hat took over the long-term projects as the project owners. Uh, that means uh, Red Hat puts a lot of resources, but other companies um, are involved. Amazon is one of them. Um, so we work with Red Hat together uh, on uh, JDK 8 and JDK 11 update projects. So if you're using any version of OpenJDK, um, we're really happy because you're able to use A, the software that we work on, and you're able to choose the distribution that fits your needs. Um, what do we contribute? Uh, a lot of people ask us, what is it that we contribute to OpenJDK? So, um, on our uh, documentation page, every single patch that we make in Coretto shows up, and then every single patch, every single one of them, we are contributing up. Uh, it, it does take time for these to come in. So, um, OpenJDK releases about a quarterly cadence. It means typically, at a minimum, uh, a fix will go in roughly three months. More typical time would be six months. Uh, sometimes it takes longer because the fix um, takes a lot more deliberation together with uh, Oracle and Red Hat and, and others until it gets to its final form. Um, now, um, let's talk about how to contribute to OpenJDK. I mean, uh, how many people here are um, contributing to op open source projects? Uh, how many contribute to OpenJDK? Hey, Gil. Um, so OpenJDK is, uh, is quite interesting. It's a very uh, old open source project with a lot of uh, history and a lot of uh, structure around it. Um, so you start by being a contributor to the project. Uh, you can submit patches, but you need somebody else to sponsor you so for anybody to even look at you. Uh, after you did a few of these, uh, you, become, you can become an author. That means you have a username and you can start filing bugs. It's kind of odd if you're used to GitHub where everybody can go in and file a bug, but the project is quite big. It has a lot of uh, open bugs, and um, the team really wants people that know what they're doing to file useful bugs. So after, I think, I think the number is eight patches. After you, you did eight significant patches, you can become an author. Uh, and after that, you can become a committer. At this point, you are able to merge fixes in. Um, so unlike many other projects uh, where there's a team that owns it, only that team can accept pull requests, here you can grow to be uh, somebody that can uh, commit patches. It's not enough though, you need an approver or reviewer. Uh, you need 32 significant contributions, you need vote to be voted in every three to five years. But at that point you can start approving fixes. This is quite interesting. Um, 
People think OpenJDK is owned by Oracle and nobody else can do that. Actually, there's quite a lot of reviewers outside of Oracle and working together, you can get uh, fixes in. Is, this is truly a, um, a community project. So a lot of the work that we're doing uh, in the Corelo team is taking uh, younger engineers and training them and helping them become authors, committers, and, and just growing for the ranks and have the ability to produce a lot more work. Um, so a lot of people ask me, how do we, how do we make fixes? So let's take a bug report. Uh, this could come from, uh, example here would be an Amazon team comes to us and say, hey, this thing we've seen in, in the profile is really slow and there's 10 other teams that have the same problem. Go fix it for us. Um, so the first thing we, we do is uh, we go look at the tip. So while many teams today still run on JDK 8, a uh, few teams run on JDK 11, the development actually happens on JDK 13. So first thing we do is let's go, let's go to JDK 13 and see if this was fixed. And it turned out that many of the bug fixes have happened already. Uh, it, it's just that the team didn't decide yet to backport them and make them available for you in JDK 8 or JDK 11. Um, so the next question, is it urgent? Uh, this could be blocking some production operation to a customer. And at this point, the customer could be an Amazon service, or it could be one of you that's using Coretto. So if the fix is urgent, uh, we will backport it to Coretto first, get it out to production, get it tested. Um, the advantage for you if you're using Coretto is we take these fixes and deploy them in Amazon production. So you might get uh, actual production testing and not just things passing the tests. Um, and then turning into the race. Uh, if it's not as urgent, uh, then we just backport it to OpenJDK release in the upstream OpenJDK project. Uh, you'll see a lot of other companies uh, do the same work. Red Hat does the same work, Azul does the same work. Um, uh, Oracle does the same work. Um, so these things become available to you on the quarterly release. Um, if it's not as urgent, we, um, or sorry, if, it, if the tip uh, doesn't have the fix, then we will go and fix it. Again, same kind of uh, uh, timeliness concern. Um, if it's urgent, we will go fix it in Coretto, and if it's not, we'll go to the tip and then crew for the longer process of backporting and make, making things available. Uh, again, the main reason we built Coretto uh, in 2016 was we needed fixes to happen right away. If, if a bug came in or, or there was a big performance problem, we were not willing to wait three to six months. Um, you know, the, a big service just doesn't wait for you. What, what happens is engineers go and build workarounds and build some, some of them are really ugly. We much rather have a fix in the core JDK as soon as we can and get it out in a couple of weeks instead of waiting three to six months. Uh, but uh, as Arun mentioned, it's critical to go and contribute all that stuff back up. Otherwise, you end up with a long list of patches that you have to keep maintaining, that you have to keep merging. Nobody likes to merge code. Uh, when you merge code, you're going to introduce new bugs uh, and new regressions. So hence, um, we're extremely passionate about uh, getting as much as possible up into the main project. Um, so I wanted to introduce something new today. Um, we've been uh, at Amazon worried ab uh, around about scale. We run, as Arun said, tens of thousands of services. Each of them, you, you can imagine, runs on many, many machines, uh, and they cost uh, quite a lot. So every time we can go and slice a few percent of uh, CPU or memory, or latency, it just means we can drive more workloads for less machines. Um, just like uh, uh, Coretto, we, we've been working for a few years now on this project called Amazon Coretto Crypto Provider. Uh, it's used extensively in Amazon for production workloads. Um, and what it does, it accelerates 35 algorithms through JCA interfaces or JCE interfaces. If you're familiar with Bouncy Castle, something similar, just a lot. Uh, more modern and a lot faster. Uh, as an example, AES GCM encryption now runs 28 times faster. Um, just like uh, Coretto, it's a drop-in replacement. 
for OpenJDK default cryptographic implementation. So the cool thing is we can take existing services, uh, don't even ask the, the customer, uh, internal customer, of course, uh, and say, hey, this just is, has been deployed and your service just runs faster now. No code changes required. Um, currently, it supports uh, uh, Linux and uh, x64. And here are a couple of examples. Um, so on the left side, you can see a little more extreme example. This is a service that was peaking at uh, above 90% CPU. Uh, the red line in the middle is the deployment line, and you can see how the CPU dropped to around somewhere between 5 to 10% after deployment. Uh, it is an extreme, extreme case, but a very real case. This is production data. Uh, on the right side, you can see two other examples where you know, it drops uh, from somewhere between 50 to 60 to somewhere between 40 and 45. Uh, again, uh, if you run thousands of machines, that means you can run a few hundred less machines on that service. If you have a lot of services like that, it, 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 it has a very serious meaning. Um, so what I'd like to do is show it to you. So this is running on my Mac. As I mentioned before, uh, this only supports Linux, but if you run in a Docker container, um, you can run it on a Mac and get, uh, get the performance improvements. Uh, if you run it plainly on a Mac, uh, the provider just falls back to the default implementation. So you can still use the same code no matter where you run. So I, I, I did the build uh, this morning, so I'm going to log it. Can you see the text? Yes. OK. So what I'm going to do now is run um, one demo for uh, generating a um, random secure number. And I'm going to start with uh, just the default implementation in OpenJDK. So what I'm doing is um, I'm running it uh, up to 10,000 iterations because we want the JIT to kick in and we want the compilation uh, to uh, bring it all the way down. As you can see, it started at 22 milliseconds and it went down to somewhere between uh, 0.5 to 0.8 milliseconds. I'll do the same with uh, ACCP. So now we start at 3 milliseconds and we go down to somewhere between 0.05 to 0.06, roughly an order of magnitude uh, improvement. Let me quickly show you the code. Um, so this is my main program. Um, as you can see, uh, I can turn on uh, the Coretto Crypto provider from code with this uh, one single line call. But it's commented out in my demo, I'm just passing a property and you can turn it on. This means you can take existing applications uh, that you don't even own the code for, and just um, install this Maven package that we released and um, get the performance uh, improvements. Uh, the code is quite straightforward. We create uh, uh, an array of si about 16K, and then we iterate 10,000 times. Every time we go in order of magnitude, we print the, the time it took. Uh, let's move to another demo. It's a little more interesting. Um, you can see a similar pattern. This time we're going to encrypt data with ASGCM. Uh, this is a notoriously slow algorithm, but also the most secure algorithm for uh, encrypting. Um, so again, we're creating um, a key and a key spec. Uh, we're getting a cipher uh, and then creating uh, 16 kilobytes of random data. And now uh, we're initializing the cipher in the loop and then encrypting the data. Uh, we're measuring the time it takes to encrypt the data and printing it out. So again, start at 12 milliseconds, went down to about 0.3. And um, after using ACCP, it started around 1 millisecond, went down to 0 0.02. Um, a little bit over an order of magnitude improvement. 
Um, and like I mentioned, this project was developed inside Amazon, tested extensively on production. Uh, this is the first time we're introducing it. Uh, thanks for coming. And um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll make the sample public and haha. <laughs> do I remember my password? I do. Okay, so the sample repo is public now. Uh, you can find the sample and, and use it. The code is already available uh, on Maven Central. So just the samples would not be enough. No, like we know we, we talked about the Maven package. What about the repo itself? Where is the code for ACCP? Oh, right. Uh, so the code for ACCP is in the Coretto uh, organization under Amazon Coretto Crypto Provider, and I will make it public as well, except it's a much longer name to type. Password needed. Perfect. <laughs> so, um, as you notice, we've we have a quick, interesting experience. So, this is a team that did not start as an open source team, and we did the migration to uh, from a closed source team, even though working on an open source project, to an open source team. Uh, and there are interesting cultural changes um, in the team. Uh, Personally, I, I'm coming from uh, about 10 years working on open source where everything to me is just natural being in the open. It was quite interesting to see engineers that didn't work on open source being uneasy about going out. So the first thing that was interesting was the comfort level of putting your code outside first. Instead of coding you know, behind closed doors and getting all the code reviews and testing it and um, getting all the feedback internally until it's perfect, Putting it out actually p produces a lot more value. Yes, you know, don't put stuff that you didn't think about or one of your mates haven't seen before, if you're not sure. But once you put it out, you, you're going to get for free a lot more code reviewers, a lot more people that have opinions and will give you valuable feedback. So pushing the team to go out and do outside first, get the code out, get the PRs out, get the tickets out or the issues out, and only then pull it in was a big and interesting change. The other thing was patience. Um, at least in this project, we're not the owners. We're guests, uh, we're members, and you have a lot of other people that you've never met. You only see them through the mailing list. Um, getting the patience to get stuff done, to get stuff approved, to understand why people are worried about uh, every small change. And in Java, every small change has a huge impact. All of, you, all of you, all of the world is using Java. The smallest mistake, the smallest behavioral change has a, can have a significant impact. And at Amazon, we felt it as the consumer's side. Uh, but it's quite interesting to get the teams to, um, the developers themselves to feel like, well, this is not a service. You cannot continuously deploy it. Once you got it out, it's out. It's going to get to customers. and for them to upgrade again is actually quite hard and quite expensive and time consuming. Be patient, um, worry about uh, distribution control. Um, the last thing that I think didn't quite change is customer obsession. So uh, I'm used to you know open source projects that just fill in with bugs and people take their time to uh, look at them because you know it's, it, these customers are not paying. They, they just file bugs on some GitHub and if, when we have time we look at it. But in, in Amazon, it's, it's quite the opposite. Like, we're extremely obsessed. A customer asks for something. Hey, let's just take all these things. Let's take the Stack Overflow posts. Let's take the GitHub issues. Let's take the Twitter. Let's automate all of it and turn it into one bug stream that we can keep on and measure how fast we're working on. I think this is, this is one thing that I really love about the open source team in Amazon, helping us automate all that kind of stuff. And if you work on open source project, that's a huge thing you can do to yourself. Just look at the bugs, respond to the customers, keep them, keep them engaged, your project will gain from that. Um, so one last question that people ask us is, where do I contribute? I want to make a fix. 
can I, can I give you a fix? It's really hard to do stuff in OpenJDK. Can I just do it in Coretto? It's just a GitHub repo, right? Um, our goal is to make all our work, everything we do, contributable back to the OpenJDK project. We talked earlier about why it's important. It's really one job at the end of the day. We're just a, a downstream distribution. So uh, because of that, all the patches that are involving OpenJDK source code, uh, we wanted to start at the OpenJDK project. We want the OpenJDK project to have the confidence that you signed the contribution agreement, that you are who you are, that it went through the right gatekeeping process so it can meet the, the, the license and so on. So while we'd love to take your fixes, we would still push you to go to OpenJDK and we will help you get them in. Um, if it's build or packaging improvements or additional libraries that we can integrate with, go ahead and um, file them on Corredo and we'd love to work with you on that. So what do you do basically? Well, uh, we would love for you to download uh, Amazon Coretto. As I said, it works in any cloud. It works on your desktop. It works as a Docker image. It is a supported Docker image. So if you see any issues around, you know, hey, this Docker image is not behaving correctly, file issues in that. So we would love to do that. Particularly with ACCP that we introduced this morning, uh, try it with your JDK. See what works, what doesn't work. And ACCP is a separate GitHub repo which we just made public. So give that a shot. See how that works with your thing. You know, and at your scale, is it showing you the performance benefits? Because we have seen the benefits within Amazon for a few years now. Um, the most important thing, like for any open source project, is like contribute, send issues, you know, submit issues, submit a PR, tell us. You know, when we are customer obsessed company, tell us what is working, what is not working, because that pretty much drives you know Yishai and me on what needs to be in our roadmap, and that's what we continue working on. And of course, we are hiring as well. So we're looking to build a nice JDK team in the Bay Area, if you're based out of Bay Area, uh, or Seattle, or anywhere. You know, this is an open source community. So we are looking to hire people, you know, talk to Yisha or myself. We'd be happy to work with you on that. And finally, uh, this is the references. So of course, there's a main page and there are repos for Coretto. So that's a good starting page for you. And there are a whole bunch of links around OpenJDK. So if anybody of you is interested in contributing to OpenJDK, it could be a confusing process as a beginner sometimes, could be overwhelming sometimes, but we'll be happy to walk you through it and see you know, where that road takes us. Uh, last but not the least, you know, Yishai and me are going to be here today. Uh, I'm here for the next couple of days. If you have any questions, talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to be clear, uh, ACCP is available on any JDK. So if you're using Oracle JDK or, or Zulu or Coretto, you can download that package and use it. Uh, we did test it with a few others. Uh, it worked for JDK 8 and JDK 11 as well.